The tour we did with Silkworm was a, was so fucking grueling. It was just ridiculous, and uh, you know, it was one of those. Sh- we hadn't really didn't have very many releases out, and we hadn't done a lot of touring. At least Engine Kid hadn't, uh, and I don't know where Silkworm was at that point. But you know, we're talking about playing to like ten, fifteen people a show, playing in Milwaukee and stuff. But they always kind of kept things on track. I remember in Florida, I was so bummed out. My, my amp had broken, and uh, I was, you know, there was some other, the van was, we, were, uh, we were in was not up operating very well, and I wanted to fucking go home. I was so over it. I wanted to go home, and, and those guys set me aside, and they're like, you know, totally talked me through it and put me right back on track, and they were like, they're like these cheerleaders for us, and like, like you can't quit, man. What are you talking about, man? You can't go home, man. You know, what are we going to do without you guys? They turned us on to so many different cool music and food and all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. It's like, I remember trying uh, uh, Mole in Texas with Tim. He's like, you got to try this. It looks horrible. It looks like shit, but you got to try it. And just like, you know, like every day there'd be something new where they, you know, or I remember one day, like I was in their van hanging out and uh, they were playing this music that I really wasn't familiar with until I heard uh Freebird and I'm like what is this band you got they're like this is Leonard Skinner and they're like oh okay and so turned us on to Leonard Skinner you know we didn't I'd never heard him at the time we lost our drummer at one point um uh and uh Michael stepped in for us and we recorded a, a Christmas single actually for CZ Records we did a uh, little drummer boy and um I think Silkworm did a track called In the Bleak Midwinter or something like that and uh Michael filled in for us and it was such a it was so killer playing with him, and I was I was actually hoping that, you know, there's some way that he could be in both bands, but you know, it wasn't to be, of course. That was kind of the thing. We were just always, you know, looking out for each other, which was, you know, it's funny. It's like nowadays, it's just it's just rare. I think in a lot of ways, at least for me and like what I've been involved in the last ten years, it's like there's not really a band that any band that I've been in is kind of connected with is like a brother band and somebody somebody who would loan you a van or loan you a drummer or loan you whatever gear whatever you needed and that was really a special thing that was uh about silkworm and i i I bet you we weren't the only band that they did that with you know they were just really generous and always always helpful you know you would think that there would be very very different experiences for a band like Silkworm and a band like Uncle Tupelo, considering how far apart we were stylistically, at least in the minds of most of the people that were listening to uh, college rock and, and independent music at that time. But we really traveled probably the same route. You know, there were, there were clubs in most college towns that we probably uh, shared the stage with them, or not with them on the same night, but we played almost all the same places, I'm sure, and um, probably slept on a lot of the same floors. There was a lot more organic, uh, word of mouth type of, uh, exposure that uh, I don't think exists today. I don't think. I mean, it does, but it's in the digital realm. It's in the. It's in cyberspace. It's. It's a whole. It's a whole nother thing, and uh, people just don't seem to have to work as hard to like really uh, uh, have their taste made for them. <laughs> you know, uh, to, back in the day, uh, you really kind of had to figure out for yourself if you like Silkworm or Uncle Tupelo, <laughs> and a lot of people would probably go to see both and decide they hated one or one of us. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, um, and I imagine most of the people watching this movie would probably have hated us, but <laughs> that's just the way it would go back then. Even though the amount of time we've actually spent together has been extremely limited over the years, I've always felt a really uh, uh, close bond with those guys.